Welcome to The Neuron, I'm Pete Huang. Today, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang announced their new line of products, but it's not just chips, it's a vision of the future of computing. Let's break down what he sees in his crystal ball and how it's playing out. It's Tuesday, June 4th, let's dive in. Here's a fun question. Guess which American brand has the best reputation? And I mean best by number one. This company is literally number one right now in the US in reputation. Okay, so a few guesses. If you're guessing Apple, that's number nine on the list. If you're guessing Costco, that's another good one. That's number 11. And we can probably agree that's not Spirit Airlines and we'd be right. They're number 98 out of 100. The American brand with the best reputation is NVIDIA. Seriously, Axios and Harris Poll did their annual update to this poll, which reaches out to tens of thousands of Americans to see how they felt. And somehow, some way, a computer hardware company is number one on the list. I would bet you so much money that the people who voted on this poll actually had no idea what NVIDIA even was just three years ago. Three years ago, that would be 2021. In some ways, more complicated times, but in other ways, especially as it relates to AI, that was a much, much simpler year. Perhaps the main reason for people knowing NVIDIA is what happened with its share price over those three years. In fact, if you bought $1,000 worth of NVIDIA stock in June of 2021, they would be worth over $6,000 today. Most of that has come since ChatGPT. NVIDIA's share price has basically gone up 10 times in a vertical line since November of 2022. But as much as NVIDIA stock is known for making people money, I would bet that nobody really knows what NVIDIA does or why it's positioned to win in the age of AI. So that's what today's episode is about. NVIDIA was started in April of 1993, 31 years ago now, the internet hadn't really been born yet. We hadn't yet gone through the dot-com boom. And in fact, we didn't really even have web browsers yet. The first one, the very first web browser was released in January of that year. 31 years ago now, three engineers were in a Denny's in San Jose, California. You had Jensen Huang, today still the CEO of NVIDIA. And you also had Chris Malachowski and Curtis Priam. The three engineers were talking about what the future of computing looked like, and they decided on two ideas, that graphics were gonna be the future, and that solving for video games could make them a lot of money. This discussion at the Denny's in San Jose was the origin of NVIDIA, today a $2.8 trillion company, who this week is at Computex, which is a Taiwan-based computer conference. There, Jensen Huang revealed their new product platform that will carry them into 2026 and 2027, along with the overarching view on what the future of computing will look like. But before we get too deep into that, let's continue the NVIDIA recap, what it's known for and how it got involved in AI in the first place. As I was saying, NVIDIA as a company was betting on graphics in video games. And again, I think it's important to set the scene here. Computers in 1993 obviously look nothing like they do today. The visuals, what you saw on a computer screen, were extremely primitive. And the games were good, but they're extremely simple by today's standards. For example, Doom, which was one of the most popular video games in the entire 90s, is about as big as four photos taken on the iPhone today, about 12 megabytes. Today, the most popular computer games could be over 2 million times as large as Doom. To tackle graphics, you need different hardware. The computer chips at the time were built for general purpose computing, but there's a big difference between calculating numbers on a spreadsheet and making 3D objects show well on a computer screen. Now, I won't get into the nitty gritty here, but just to give you an example, when you show a ball on a screen, you have to simulate the light, the reflection, the color, all of these things. And there's a ton of math involved in doing that. And even worse, you have to do all of that math all at once. For example, if you calculated first the reflection, then the color, then the background, it would take a long time. So that's one of the ways that the hardware you need for graphics is different from what was prominent at the time. That new hardware was called GPUs or graphics processing units. And they're focused on doing a lot of small things at the same time 
as many tasks as you can at once. The existing hardware was called CPUs or central processing units. They focus on doing individual tasks very quickly with each task potentially being more complex. Now today, most computers, especially the ones that you're using, likely have both CPUs and GPUs. So there we have it, graphics, video games, GPUs. That was the general scope of NVIDIA in 1983, and that pretty much stayed relevant for the next 20, 25 years. If you had said that the general scope of the company was that same thing in 2016, people would still largely agree with you, right? Graphics, video games, GPUs. But the eight years since then have taken NVIDIA into completely new territory. In 2016, people at NVIDIA were looking at usage patterns of the products and noticed something that they hadn't before. AI researchers, they were using graphics processors, the ones that were initially built to make your computer games look good and run fast to run their AI models. These AI researchers were seizing upon a set of work led by Andrew Ng, one of the leading researchers in AI and former head of Google Brain. While researching at Stanford, he led some work trying to figure out if they could use GPUs to speed up model development. And if they could, not only would research go faster, the AI models they built could also go bigger. And since that time, since discovering that AI researchers were in fact using GPUs for AI research, NVIDIA has been putting on a multi-year sprint to build out new products that serve the AI use case. Everything in AI, everything runs on NVIDIA, which is why NVIDIA has been making so much money since AI became the hot new thing last year. Here's how to understand why they're winning. First, the computing that comes from GPUs goes into training these models. I was at NVIDIA's GTC conference where they took the covers off of Blackwell, their line of products for 2024 and 2025. Blackwell is so powerful and so power efficient that you could assemble around 10,000 or so of these GPUs and train all of GPT-4 in about 10 days, 10 days to get the most powerful model in AI. Now before Blackwell, you would literally need millions of NVIDIA's older chips from 2016 to 2020 to do the same thing. This week, at another conference called Computex, NVIDIA is announcing Rubin, which will be even more powerful than Blackwell and even more power efficient. So training AI models is one piece of it. The second piece is perhaps even more important. It's using the AI models. That takes computing resources too. Every time you type something into ChatGPT, there is a building with a bunch of servers that carry a bunch of NVIDIA GPUs calculating what should come next in your ChatGPT conversation. We're gonna spend a ton more time and resources using AI models than training them. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg has an off the cuff estimate that if you spent a billion dollars making an AI model, you might end up spending $10 billion of the lifetime of that model using it. So that is where all this demand for NVIDIA is coming from. The other half of this is to understand why NVIDIA specifically is winning. After all, they have well-known competitors in companies like AMD and Intel. Now, fun fact, AMD is run by Lisa Su and Jensen Huang's mother is Lisa Su's grandfather's sister. That makes them first cousins once removed. The simple differences between NVIDIA and its competitors is that one, NVIDIA has just had a head start in making really, really good chips, but two, they also invested in the software to use those chips, which virtually none of their competitors have. And that second part is not discussed often enough. If you make it easy for developers to build on your stuff, more of them will build on your stuff. Sometimes it's just that simple which is why every single big tech company has a developer conference now to showcase all the different ways that they're making it easier for developers to build stuff. Apple, Google, Amazon, they all have it. In NVIDIA's eight year sprint to build for AI, they also made sure to build the software layer that goes on top of their GPUs that make it easy to use their GPUs. And among developers, that ecosystem that they built, that layer of tooling, is completely unmatched against other providers. So when the numbers on the spec sheet and the actual people who will use the stuff both say to use NVIDIA, then well, you use NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is not just about making their individual chips more powerful. They're also focused on what happens when you connect a bunch of chips together. 
Now, usually connecting two chips is not the same as one big chip that's twice as powerful. Chips have to communicate with each other, and doing that can be very hard or very slow. Not for NVIDIA. They have the technology to make it seem like two chips forget that they're two chips, and it makes them operate really as if they're one. So the natural question is, what do you get when you have thousands, millions, or even more of these chips working together as one? When the chips themselves get so powerful that building GPT-4 is now a thousand times less expensive than before. Jensen Huang said this at both NVIDIA GTC and Computex. We're not just talking about data centers anymore. We're actually talking about intelligence factories. Here's what he means by that. The term data center is one of those vaguely technical things where you kind of know what's going on, but you mostly don't. They're just big buildings with big computers that are crunching numbers all day. Now, when you're watching this video on YouTube, it's because there's a server in some data center somewhere that is sending your computer the data for the video file. It's data, it's numbers. With AI, those numbers now mean something. When that data center is generating your chat GPT conversation, it's generating some form of intelligence, some reasoning. When you use ChatGPT to code, the data center is now generating something that resembles a programmer. What Jensen is saying is that there will be a whole new category, a massive one, of software that looks like ChatGPT, software that provides intelligence, not just data. Now, part of this is what any good CEO would do. He's trying to paint a narrative of the world that says, look, this is how the world is going to be. If it makes sense to you like it makes sense to me, then you should buy our stock. It is serving the corporate purpose for the brand of NVIDIA. But all that aside, he's pointing towards a world betting more and more on AI, that we really are at the start of a boom that will mean more AI and more data centers churning out AI. Now, you might be listening to this and being like, okay, sure, but like, are they really just betting on like, a billion people using ChatGPT today, like, is that all they're aiming for? Ultimately, it is a much bigger picture than that. They're betting on AI models getting way more capable than they are today. Imagine you have a team of 10 AI employees running your business on your behalf, or every piece of software having some AI component to it, or people hang out with their AI friends on their phones. Those are all going to require computing resources that'll come from data centers powered by NVIDIA. The more we learn about what's coming with AI models, the more plausible this world seems. And it explains why there are so many data centers being built. Microsoft is spending more than $10 billion a year on things like new data centers to support training and using new AI models. Now, when a small group of us talked with Microsoft CTO Kevin Scott a couple weeks ago, he basically said, look, we're spending a crap ton right now. If we didn't have a solid idea of how we make that money back, then we should all be fired immediately. So if you drive through Northern Virginia today, you will see wide swaths of construction going on. All these faceless buildings, those are all data centers. And it even affects energy too. All this AI generation, these data centers need electricity. So everything from coal to natural gas to nuclear is on the table. Whatever you can think of that can increase our supply of energy, the AI and data center industry is all yours. Jensen Huang and Nvidia have made it clear over the last few years that they are the one to beat when it comes to hardware that supports the new age of AI. And the demand for their products and every number you can think of, the sales numbers, the stock price, everything, they all support it. And what they're driving towards is a new model of what computing means. This is Pete wrapping up the Neuron for June 4th. I'll see you in a couple days.